I've always been interested in hidden secrets inside old video games. When you stumble upon little secrets in games you never knew about, you get an extra burst of satisfaction. Especially when it comes to finding new things in games you've played through a bunch of times. So today, let's take a look at some of the best easter eggs in retro games that I know about right now. So let's kick things off with one hell of a bang and take a look at Sword of Sedan on the Sega Genesis. We all know this game sucks, but in a baffling, charming sort of way. The giant sprites and the garbage gameplay make this game a mockery to everyone and anyone who it comes in contact with. You have a sword that barely does anything to the enemies. You have to stab enemies like 20 times before it takes down any opponent. Meanwhile, you get hurt yourself, which takes down your energy. But you can refill your health with potion, and there are a lot of different types of potion. You easily obtain potions that are dropped on the floor, and you can drink as many as you'd like at once. But that doesn't mean you should. If you drink all of the potions at once, your character's chest explodes and all of your insides flop out. And to top it off, you're then shown a glorious anti-drug message. It's awesome. I'll tell you what, it gets the point across better than Wally Bear or Cartoon All-Stars to the rescue. Imagine if they all just exploded into blood and guts when they tried any substance. That'll show those kids, scare the shit out of them. And you can accomplish this little trick in less than a minute if you play the game on easy mode. So I know this isn't technically retro, but it's freaking Streets of Rage and the point of this easter egg is to unlock the classic 16-bit style of the game, so whatever, I'm including it. In the second stage when you're at the police precinct, you want to knock the taser out of the cop's hand and pick it up. Once you have a hold of it, bring it to the little room in the background and smash it through the arcade machine like the super cool person that you are. Once you do this, you're taken into a retro world where you play in a 16-bit inspired style for a while. This next easter egg is one a lot of you may already know about, but just in case you don't know it, you have to see this. In Star Fox on the Super Nintendo, you can unlock a batshit crazy world that will feel like a 90s fever dream. If you go to the asteroid stage on the third track, you have to be on the lookout for a giant gray rock that will be on your right hand side. You want to shoot this and make sure it blows up because this will cause a giant bird egg to pop out. This is easier to do if you have the twin blasters, but if not, it's fine. If you manage to shoot the egg, a bird will pop out. A wonderfully polygonal bird. But don't shoot the bird, just fly into it and it will take you to this other wacky dimension. Flying into the bird isn't easy to do, so don't get discouraged if it takes a few tries. When you enter this dimension, you're gonna see melting and wavering human faces which are downright creepy. Maybe they were thinking about a trip to the moon. You're also going to see paper airplanes that you need to shoot for quite a while before finally getting to the boss of the stage. A slot machine. That's right, you have to fight a giant slot machine. In space! You just keep shooting the machine's lever to make it spin random outcomes. I also need to point out that the music in this stage is great and very appropriate, as it sounds like some circus-inspired trippy music. It's basically the Star Fox version of the infamous Yoshi's Island level, Touch Fuzzy, Get Dizzy. And speaking of Yoshi's Island, it's next on the list. 
In stage 3-8, called Naval Piranha's Castle, you can quickly beat this boss if you manage to get to him before Comic does. Now, I personally think this is one of the most fun boss fights in the game, so I wouldn't want to skip this fight, but it's a fun little trick regardless. You're gonna want to slow down before getting to the boss because it's really easy to miss your opportunity. The exact moment you see Naval Piranha, hit it with an egg fast. If you manage to do this before Kamek changes him into a super monster, then you can take out this boss with one hit. It's pretty nuts. Even Kamek himself is impressed and says, oh my. At first I thought you could do this with any boss in the game, but it appears to only work with this guy. In block 3-4 of Castlevania 3 on NES, a new little secret started popping up last year that is actually pretty fun to try out. If you throw the dagger at the same time as all of the clouds are flickering with thunder, you can cause lightning to come down and strike the Cyclops. Of course, he has to be standing in a good spot or else it won't work. This might take you a few tries, but once you get a hang of it, it's really fun to pull off and ends up taking away 4 hit points from the boss. This only works with the dagger, by the way. Here's one that's pretty famous from Aladdin on Sega Genesis. On the second stage of the game, early on you'll find a familiar set of ears that just so happens to be hanging out here in the desert. If you position Aladdin just right so his head moves into the middle of the mouse ears, you'll be rewarded with an extra life. This is really easy to do and a nice little Disney Easter egg. Next up, I have another Sega Genesis secret, this time from McDonald's Treasure Land. This is a pretty fun and cheerful little platformer, so I find it rather amusing that this is a thing. On the password screen, you need to enter the password balloons, ruby, m, and clown, and then press start three times until you hear an explosion. After that, quickly hold up and left on the d-pad and wait. The McDonald's sign will turn into a 3D model and ominous sounding music will start playing. Whoa! From there, you can use the d-pad to rotate it, use B or C to scale it up or down, hold A while using the d-pad to move it around, or press C to switch it to another 3D model. The models include various cubes, the Sega S, and a spaceship looking thing. This trick is totally trippy and it fits in well with the HR Puffin Stuff vibe of McDonald Land. In Cruisin' USA for the Nintendo 64, there's a little easter egg on the Iowa stage that's kinda weird. This is about 10 stages in by the way, so you won't be able to automatically select the level unless you've played through some of the tracks already. When you get to Iowa, you drive along the road until you get to a cornfield. Right after the yellow road sign, you will see a woman standing there giving you the finger. It's funny, but also something that would've probably freaked me out if I just happened to stumble upon this back in the day. Imagine a woman just standing in a cornfield, flipping you the bird with no one else around. It's disturbing. It took me a few tries to make this turn, cause it's really easy to miss or get blocked by a giant tree in your face. <sighs> Good times. And that's it! I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe even found something new. Do you know of any other cool retro game easter eggs that aren't just codes you input? If so, feel free to leave some secrets in the comments, and thank you so much for watching! See you next time! Bye!